Hey guys, this is Curves from the Com K9. In, in this video, we're going to go over the place command. We're going to go over what it is, how to teach it, different ways to use it, and the purpose of it. As well as we're going to show you a few different ways to proof it. Um, place command, that is a big one. Um, there's lots of training regimens out there that actually leave it out, don't even mention it. Um, for us, it's pretty much our foundation. It's the foundation of almost everything we do. It's a big part of how we create calmness in the dog, how we remove stress, anxiety. You know, even some levels of aggression can be removed from using it. Um, it's just an awesome command all the way around. So I hope you, you know, watch this whole video and learn a lot from it. So now we're going to go over what place is and the purpose of it and how to use it. So what it is, is pretty simple stuff. Dog, go to a mat and stay there. You know, that's basically the concept of it. Um, <coughs> it doesn't have to be a mat. It can be a dog bed. It can be a towel you throw on the floor. It can be a sweatshirt. You know, pretty much anything. But the idea is just, you know, a boundary that they can get on and stay there. So that's what it is. Now the purpose of it, you know, it does quite a bit. On our end, you know, we're, we don't do that much. It's pretty easy, actually. Hey, dog, get over here and don't leave the mat. But what's happening on their end is they're learning the rules of the house. They're learning, you know, not to run out of an open door, not to jump on counters, not to jump on guests, not to chase the cat. And at the same time, they're learning all these rules. We're also building a relationship because, you know, we're the one that's enforcing those rules. You know, even though, you know, we may not really be doing anything, we may actually be sitting on the couch watching TV, but since we told them to get on the mat and stay there, you know, we're actually involved. We're involved in all those decisions of should I chase the cat or should I do this or should I do that? Because again, we told them what to do. <coughs> so, you know, there's quite a bit of stuff that are going on. And it's real powerful as far as, you know, what you're creating. What you're creating with this stuff is that. A calm, relaxed, you know, dog. Um, when most people struggle with their dog, it's not when they're playing with them. It's not when they're, you know, going for a walk. It's not when they're playing fetch and, or things like that. But when, the times when they struggle with the dog is when they're not interacting with them. When they are trying to sit down and watch TV, or they're trying to read a book, or they're trying to fix dinner, you know, things like that. When the dog is, you know, realized that you're kind of preoccupied, that's when they pretty much get bored in a way. You know, they're looking around, you're like, hey, you know, mom and dad, they're not doing anything with me. You know, what can I do to entertain myself? That's when you start seeing, you know, the chewing and, you know, the nonsense. And a lot of times it creates anxiety, you know, it creates, you know, stress in them because they're not really sure what's expected. And now you start seeing the, the pacing around the house, the obsessively following mom and dad everywhere, trying to figure out what, sh what they should be doing. So simply put them on the mat, let them know exactly what's expected. Hey, dog, I want you to relax. I want you to hang out with me and be you know, relatively okay about it. All right, so now I'm going to go over how to teach the actual command. So first thing, I'm going to bring him up to the, the mat, not on it just yet, but right up here to the side. And now I'm going to say the command, which is place. And then I'm going to get a gentle leash pressure forward onto the mat. Once he's centered, pressure up, and that lets him know he should stop there. Now I'm going to do this several times from different angles. Place. Pressure up right here. As soon as he stops moving, I release the pressure. Now the reason I'm going to do it from several different angles is, you know, dogs are weird. You know, like if you only do it coming from that way, some of them will only understand it coming from that way. So I want to make sure I do it from different areas so that way he'll, you know, understand it from any direction. So when I release them, I want to say dog's name, say come, and then use gentle loose pressure to kind of show them what that means. Hans, come. Good boy. And by doing it this way, I'm also starting the beginning stages of recall. Stop. Place. Gentle pressure. There we go. Hans, come. Good boy. Place. There we go. And I want to do that, you know, a dozen times maybe. Um, the idea of that specific thing is what I'm teaching him is that the word place means to stop on this object. So after I do that over and over again, basically what I'm looking for from him is some type of commitment. Something letting me know that he kind of understands what I'm talking about. Um, that could be him sitting down, 
It could be him laying down. It could be him just standing there, you know, making really awesome eye contact with me. You know, any of those things kind of lets me know he's beginning to understand that. Now, the next thing I want to teach him is that I'm allowed to walk away from the mat, but I want him to stay here. So this is going to consist of, you know, again, several things. I'm going to do, you know, a couple baby steps, you know, working myself away from them, around them, all types of things. <laughs> but the most important part here is going to be how I, you know, let him know that he's not allowed to leave it. So what's going to happen is if he tries to leave the mat, there's basically going to be three parts to that. The first one is going to be a verbal correction. I'm going to say no. The next one is going to be a physical correction, which is going to be a leash pop here. And the third one is going to be guidance with the leash to guide him back onto the mat. So the very first thing is I want to start standing sideways like this. Body is side, beside him, leash up in the air. The reason I do this is simply body language. <laughs> if I stand here like this, you know, side to him, leash here, and I sit forward. What that means to a dog is basically follow me, or in dog training terms, heel. You know, since I want him to stay here, I don't want to basically trick him and, you know, say heel to him. So what I'm going to do, again, is, you know, leash up, body is sideways like this, face him. And this way the body language is clear. It makes it a little bit easier for him to understand I don't want him to follow me. So I take a step sideways. Real small steps here. You know, it's all a you know, gradual process, baby steps. <laughs> the first time I do this, he's probably going to follow me. Again, the way I correct that, I say no verbally, and then follows with a physical correction of a leash pop, and then pressure to put it back on the mat. And I'm going to do this little side step over and over again until he stops trying to come off the mat. Now, once he stops trying to come off the mat, that means he's starting to understand it. He's starting to get the, the basic gist of it here. Now I'm going to make it just a little bit harder. A little baby step here. So, you know, quarter circle now. And then I'm going to do this over and over again until he gets it. Until he start, stops trying to follow me off the mat. Once he understands that, now I'm going to make it a little bit harder. Half circle. You know, back up. Do it again. Once I'm able to do that, you know, good, you know, a couple times for that and try to come off the mat, now I'm going to make it just a little bit harder again. You know, all the way around. And then I'm going to do this, you know, a couple times. Go opposite direction, different ways to make sure he understands it. And again, if any time he tried to come off the mat, I would say no, follow by leash pop, follow by guidance, put it back on. And at this point, you know, you can walk fast if you want. You know, slow if you want. You know, just kind of dance around here, basically. Just let them know, hey, I'm allowed to move around. You can't follow me. <coughs> Once I get to the point where he's, again, he's not trying to come off anymore. That means he's understanding the basic gist of this now. Now I want to try to actually create some space between the dog and myself. So that means I just want to walk away here. At this point, you know, it's still baby steps. So I'm still holding on to the leash. Hold him up over top of him. Take a step back. If he tries to follow me off, again, verbal no, followed by a leash pop and pressure or guidance to put him back on the mat. <coughs> Do this, you know, back and forth a couple times. Once he understands that, he doesn't want to follow me off anymore. Now I'm going to drop the leash. You know, just drop it. This is one of the things that a lot of people mess up on here. Instead of just dropping the leash, they very slowly Put it down right here, the hands out. You don't want to slowly back away from the dog. One is you look funny if you do that, you know, the dog's gonna laugh at you, that ain't even good. Um, the other part of that is, if I want him to stay on this mat, at this point, I want to make it you know, relatively easy for him. So if you think about what our hands mean to a dog, they generally mean affection, you know, which is good, but in this particular circumstance, I want him to succeed at this stuff. I don't make it too hard just yet. So if you think about it, my hands mean affection. You know, what else means affection? Food. So you, you put those two together now. So imagine I have a chicken leg tied around my wrist, you know, both of them here. And I'm leaning down towards the dog, putting my hands up, and I'm stepping away. If I'm doing that with chicken tied to my wrist, you know, or, you know, just love and affection. 
it's so hard for him. He's going to follow me off. Is it too challenging? So at this stage, I want to make sure it's very easy for him. So again, just drop an inch, you know, put it down. They're all slow and all that stuff. So once he gets to the point where he can hang out there, I drop the leash, and now it creates his space. When I first start walking away from him, I want to make sure that I'm actually backing away here. I want to back away four feet, five feet, six feet, you know, a good little chunk of space here, before I turn around and walk away. The reason I'm doing this, they get it, it comes down to body language. To a dog, just like before, this means follow me. So basically, I'm sending the dog to make signals. <laughs> At one point, I'm telling them, hey, stay on the mat. The next second, I'm saying, follow me off the mat. So it's a little confusing here. So when I put the dog on the mat, in the beginning, I always want to make sure that I back away, you know, four or five steps and before I turn and walk to make sure he understands what I want here. <laughs> Another part here is just, you know, kind of eye contact, looking at the dog. At this point, you know, my goal of this whole thing is to let the dog know, hey, it's okay that I'm going to leave you. You know, I'm going to walk around and go do stuff, whether I'm cooking or cleaning or whatever. <laughs> but if I put him here and I'm staring at him the whole time, and I'm walking away, looking at him, I'm in the kitchen cooking, I'm peeping around the corner, staring at him. I'm sitting on the couch, you know, watching TV, and then every minute or so I start staring at the dog. What happens is, every time you look at him, you start engaging him. So if I'm engaging the dog, if I'm looking at him, if I'm talking to him, that means something. That means I want something from you. Either I want you to come to me, I want to love on you, I want something, you know, whatever it is. But either way, it's, I'm engaging them in some type of activity. So again, I start sending mixed signals to my dog. If I have them on the mat, I want them to stay there. The last thing I want to do is start staring at them because it's just, you know, confusing here. <laughs> now, I'm okay walking up to them, you know, loving on them, you know, giving them hugs and kisses, you know. I can do all that stuff there. If you wanted to, you could even get down a spoon with them, you know. It doesn't matter. But for the most part, I want to leave the dog alone. And that's one of the hardest things for people to do. People aren't used to spending time with a dog and just letting them be. You know, let them, let them be a dog. You know, let them do dog stuff. You know, most people are always so, you know, involved with everything. You know, they're always talking to them. They're always going to play with them. They're always, you know, doing something there. That the dog just can't learn to be just a dog, pretty much. They can't learn to unwind and relax. You know, so when they're here, you know, for the most part, kind of leave them alone a little bit. You know, just let them be a dog for a little while. And then plus, that's going to teach them how to relax and mellow out some. <laughs> Walking around in circles, you know, good thing to practice to help him learn, you know, I want to stay there. And again, at any time if he came off the mat, it would just be a verbal no, a leash pop, and again, the guy just put him back on there. Even walking back and forth like this, you know, it's challenging to a dog. You know, it takes some effort for them to stay there and not give a follow -up. <coughs> And again, it teaches them that humans can walk around and I don't always have to be involved in every part of it. All right, so the next thing we're gonna go over in the next little short clip is just gonna be how to proof this stuff, you know, how to make it a little bit more challenging for them and make it more successful for everybody. All right, now I'm gonna show you what it looks like when there's no leash on the dog. I want to show you two different ways. The first one is simply calm the dog to me onto the mat. The second one is going to be having the dog follow me around and then go to the mat. So, so here's the first one. Hans, come. Come on, buddy. Good boy. Come on, sweetie. Place. Good boy. So there's the first one. Um, examples of when you might use something like that. Um, let's say I just got done, you know, having a family meal in the kitchen. You know, I have a mat in there by the table. So that way the dog's not running around the house, you know, chewing on my slippers when I'm not looking. Or, you know, jumping on the counter, you know, things like that. So I have the dog in the kitchen by the table. I'm done eating. I want to come mellow out the family room a little bit. Call the dog to me. Get on the mat. You know, hang out come. Maybe the dog's chasing the kids around. You know, maybe he's trying to jump on them or, you know, they're going in and out of the door. And I don't want to have to worry about the dog bolting on me. You know, same, same idea. You know, hey dog, come over here. Get on the mat. So there's that one. And now we're going to go over what the second one looks like. 
So here's what the second one looks like. I'm standing here with the dog. I want them to follow me somewhere. Maybe I want them to follow me to the kitchen. Maybe I want them to follow me to the back door of the potty. Maybe I want them to follow me out to the garage. Who knows? But the idea, I want them to follow me from one mat to another mat in a different room or the same room, either way. So simply call the dog here. Hans, come. Good boy, buddy. So now we're going to go over how to proof it. Uh, this time we're using a little puppy, so hopefully we can see him, you know, kind of mess up, so that we see how I fix it. Um, you can be as creative as you want here. You know, the, you know, possibilities are endless. Just the more creative you are, the cooler stuff you can do with it. Um, we're going to keep it pretty simple. You know, little mild distractions here. Simply, you know, grabbing a carabiner, get quarters laying around, you know, whatever. Just drop. It. Um, stuff like that with some dogs can actually make them nervous and freak them out a little bit, make them run. You know, so this is a good way to help dogs deal with that noise and things like that. So that's one way to do it, or one option. Um, you get their favorite toy. Um, that's something else to bring, bring up. <coughs> While they're on this mat, I'm okay with them having shoe toys. Um, I generally don't recommend a squeaky toy because the purpose is for them to stay calm. You know, so a squeaky toy a lot of times will get them excited and amped up and things like that. Um, I wouldn't really want to give a ball here because the ball is going to roll off the mat. And, you know, it's going to make it more challenging. So it's something like a toy, but, you know, it can be difficult for them. And, you know, they want to chase them. So we get the toy, roll it by. Well, hoping it wouldn't actually land on the mat. But. So I'll try that again. So tennis balls, anything you think of, just something to kick around the floor pretty much. There's another good spot to practice doorbell. Um, this is a remote control doorbell. This is something that we use. You can use your own doorbell if you want. But the sound of the doorbell, a lot of times will trigger dogs to run towards the door, to you know, try to run out of the door, things like that. So there's another one, knocking. Um, if knocking on the door is a big, big trigger for your dog, you can actually start closer to them. You know, start right by. Knock, knock, knock. Knock, knock. Knock on the wall. And then gradually get yourself closer and closer to the door until, you know, you actually get to it. And that way also help them deal with that, those sounds without getting overly excited. You could use a broom. A lot of dogs react to the, the fast movement of it. So you can sweep here, sweep around them. Drop it. You use a vacuum here. If you are, you know, in good shape, want to do a few push-ups around them, you know, you do anything you want here. Just the idea is I want to distract them to teach them, hey, you know, when I make a rule, you have to follow through with it. I was hoping we, you know, puppy would mess up for us a little bit more here, but the, again, the idea, if he did come off the mat, as soon as I saw it, I would say no. Walk up to them with the leash, give a little correction, and then guys put them back on the mat. It's worth a shot. Um, next thing I want to talk about is a little bitty leash here. Um, what we use this for is right now all this stuff is happening with a long leash on. <laughs> Anywhere from a four foot leash or a six foot leash or you know whatever you normally use with your dog. That's why I want you to have on them at this point of the training. The reason I want that leash on there, if he comes off the mat, ideally what it would look like without a leash. For example, I'm standing right here. If he comes off the mat coming towards me, what I want it to be is simply I say no and then he just jumps right back on the mat. If that's the case, you know, I really don't need to use a physical correction there. Or if he comes off the mat coming towards me and I walk towards him and he jumps on the mat. Again, I don't really need a physical correction at that point. If he comes off the mat and starts, you know, heading towards that corner, you know, I want to say no, call the dog back to me, put him on the mat. If he does all that stuff, you know, I'm not really using a leash anymore. I can take it off. But if none of those things happen, you know, if I say no and then he just decides to 
running around the house doing laps while I chase them, you know, that's not good for anybody. You know, it's not good for a relationship. You know, so what happens is without the leash on in the beginning stages of training, you know, you're going to struggle because you can't make this stuff happen anymore. You can't grab the leash and give a physical correction with the guidance, you know, to bring it back on if the leash isn't there. So that's the reason in the beginning stage of training, I want that leash on, you know, all the time while you're working with them. Now, obviously, you know, if your eyes aren't on them, you know, all the training stuff needs to come off. But if you're actually doing stuff, you know, it's a good idea to keep that on there. So that way you can actually enforce the rules that you make. Now, the, the part where people struggle when using a leash in the training in this way is that as soon as that leash comes off, now all of a sudden the dog's, you know, looking down and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, that, that six foot leash I had on me earlier is gone. Now mom and dad can't do anything. You know, they can't influence me in any way. <laughs> so now we're talking to them, we're telling them no, we're telling you back on the mat, and they're blowing us off completely. And we don't have a tool there, something to grab, something to guide them from point A to point B to put them back on. You know, we're going to struggle. But at some point, the leash has to come off, you know, to have a normal, you know, dog there. So that's what this little leash is for. You know, this is something we recommend all of our clients use. What happens is, when that long leash comes off, this goes on first. You know, this comes off, or this, I'm sorry. The long leash comes off, and then this goes on its place. So what happens is, now the dog is looking down. Again, you know, they don't see that long leash anymore. And they still have that thought there, like, hey, nobody can get me because I don't have a leash on, you know, so I can come off the mat, I can run from them, I can misbehave. But then, you know, mom and dad walk up there, grab the little leash that they didn't even know was there, and then now they can correct the dog and bring the dog from point A to point B and kind of get them to do what they want there. <coughs> so, leave this on the dog for a little while, you know, maybe two weeks, you know, after that leash comes on. You know, don't be, don't be in a big hurry to take this stuff off, because as soon as you take this stuff off, that's when people start struggling. So don't need a big hurry there. If you need it, you know, you need it. Leave it on until you're not needed anymore. But again, you know, a couple weeks pass, you're not really using it, you know, things are going really awesome there, then you can take all that stuff off. And if, you know, months go by and you start struggling again, you know, there's no shame in putting the stuff back on. But basically what a leash is, is a, it's a translator in a way. It helps me speak dog and dog speak me. It helps us understand each other. It helps us kind of get what we want. And that way, you know, I understand what the dog's trying to do there, the dog understands what I want from it. So the leash is a really awesome tool, this is you know, really not used enough. But the short leash is a really good option for a lot of people, especially when they're struggling getting that you know, long leash off. Alright, so I hope you enjoy you know, everything here. I hope you picked up a few things and hopefully come up with some you know, good ones on your own. And get ready for the next segment.